Hey everyone, it's Sim Farmer, and welcome back to Carmsland Farm for episode 13 of our Let's Play series. This is about my fourth attempt to start in this video. Um, I did complete two contracts overnight, and you can see one of them here showing up, although that's not the correct price. It's not letting me collect it. The other one has disappeared in field nine. Um, both fields have now changed from harvested, so that one's now gone to cultivated, that one's gone to plowed. The combine I had there has just disappeared. I say every time I reloaded into the game, I tried unloading, reloading, the contracts show up and then they disappear. So I'm just gonna have to add the money and I can't even collect or cancel that one. As it's not doing anything, and I've got a big list of uh, errors for the uh, contract field jobs. So I'm gonna have to manually add in, I think it was 34,800. Um, 34,008 for the contract on 17 and then for the other contract was 13,628 so yeah a little bit annoying I've bought in the previous update from Monday they are supposed to fix the contract system so I had no idea what's gone wrong uh, with that and that's not even showing the correct price so I don't know. <laughs> Never had a problem before like that. So yeah, it's quite a new one. So it's a little bit annoying, but we have got the money for it. Um by the powers of <laughs> cheat mode. So our cows could do with a little bit of feed, but that's they're not desperate. I did give them a mix, um one full load of totem mix ration before we skip through the night. Our new slurry pit is working so we're up to 110,000 litres 832 our little slurry extension we installed last time our manure we're now up to what 68,000 litres that's gone up about 10,000 since we last checked uh, the chickens and sheep are fine we don't need to worry about those at the moment so they've got plenty of grain left and the sheep have got plenty of grass and water uh, production wise uh, cheese is doing okay. We will need to top up the milk again in a bit. But again, we can do that when we come back up here. And the water on these new greenhouses we bought last time are doing well as well. So plenty of water in those. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to buy field four. So this grass field here, it's 125,000. No, 128,040. But we are going to buy that so expand our farm a little bit more and what we're going to do we'll cut the grass in it for silage but i am going to lease a all-in-one bale wrapper to use rather than using ours and then a separate bale wrapper because uh, we will need to lease a bale wrapper anyway and we've currently got no space in here unless we empty this and sell all that and then refill it with the loading wagon uh, but I don't really want to do that I'd rather just do the bales and we can leave them in the field until they're ready and then take them to the sell point so we'll jump in the Massey I'm going to get the wheels changed back on this as well uh, we also need to refuel it and we could, <laughs> could do with giving it a good clean off it is absolutely filthy uh, what we'll do first, we'll give it a wash so we're not getting these mucky tyres off and then we can change the wheels when it's nice and clean and we'll also get it refuelled as well and we'll get the mower hooked up and then we'll head over to field 4 I don't know whether I'm going to cut the other three grass fields as well I may just do field 4 depends on how much time I can get to do all of them there we go it's looking a lot better I'll get this fueled up hopefully we've got some diesel left in the tank See how much we've got in here. Oh, that's it. I can never remember which end of the trigger is on this one to refill it. 
go, I don't want 10,000 litres. We'll get another 1,000 litres. That's if we've got a little bit of money. Why is that now not refilling? And it's another one of those things, because it was empty, it's not registering, you have to come out the trigger and back in. There we go. So I'll get this uh, fueled up, we'll change the tyres and we'll get the mower hooked up and head over to field 4. Right, we've got the mowers on and we're just trying to work out how to get into this field. Access is not particularly good. So from what I've seen this is the only way into it unless you drive through the hedge. So you have to go through the sheep pasture, into the horse training area and then into the pig enclosure and then through into field 4. So, yeah, not, not the easiest of fields to get into, so I'm kind of reconsidering whether to put this as an arable field. So the plan was to um, cut the grass in this, then um, play it up and then do it as an arable field. Go and close this gate, I know the sheep can't actually escape. Always better safe than sorry. Oop, jump. Jump. We'll train ourselves as we don't have horses. So yeah, it would be nice. This is one of the downsides with maps like this is you can't take out these fences and hedges and put your own gate in somewhere. It would be great if you could in build mode. Let's get this unfolded. Uh, get that switched on. Oh, wrong button. Get this lowered down. We'll do headland first in this direction and then we'll come back the other way and throw the outer swath into this one. And then we can do a third pass on the headland on the inside of this, throwing it again into this swath. Uh, same as we did last time. So yeah, my plan for this one was to cut the grass first and we'll plough this up and then next spring we can get a new crop in it and have it as an extra arable field because we don't necessarily need uh, it as a grass field I think the three grass fields we've got are more than enough for what we need at the moment so it wouldn't have been so bad if there was a gate here just next to those double gates there would have made more sense or even one opposite those double gates in this corner so you could access it a lot easier. I mean the, the equipment we've got will be e easily be able to get in here with the combine and the header. Well, obviously if we do get some larger equipment in the future it's going to make things a little bit tricky to work this field. So that's the first pass done, so turn that off and then if I can remember which buttons it is, there we go, turn that back on. Uh, we'll follow the headland round, throw in the swath of this one into that and then so we'll come back the other direction uh, doing the outer cut. So this first first row will have three lots into one. So we've still got our crops to sell which will be next month at the best price for the canola 
and the outs we have will be next month so that should give us another 60,000 when we come to sell those I was hoping to try and get a small area so I've mentioned this before I forgot that there's only that one small forest area on this and it's quite expensive to buy so we won't really be able to do much in the way of forestry this winter So it may be a case of just selling the crops and then skipping through to spring so we can uh, start doing some more field work. Right, so let's raise that up and we'll spin around the other way. And then we'll just get this one into that room. And then once we're done this, I'll probably just do one more headland around the inside of this one and then start doing the up and down on the actual field. Okay, so the grass cutting is going well. We've got quite a bit done on this field, although uh, this bit is quite a while after I started cutting this job. I've had to uh, stop recording, so it's been a few days since I actually started this, but I have in between gone round and cut the, the other three grass fields we own, and they're all bailed up as well. So our money has gone down a little bit because I've leased the uh, Kverland Vicon fast bail so they're all done bailed up wrapped so I just need to finish cutting this field and then we'll get the baler over here get this all bailed up get those wrapped as well and then we'll move the bales off this field maybe next time so we can get this field cleared and look at plowing it up taking soil samples getting the lime spread to set the pH levels and then we can uh, look at potentially what we're going to do in regards of using it for a crop next year so possibly look to get some oats in this one and well that will be a job for in the spring for planting but we can get the field prepped ready uh, for then. Uh, the other silage bales we can leave in the field because we're not going to be doing any more work in the, those grass fields now until spring as well. Um, so it's pointless moving them and then moving them again. We can just collect them up when they're fermented and then we'll sell those. I think we've got 70 bales in the large, no 70 bales in total off the three fields. I think it's like 43 bales off field eight. So we're already up to 70 bales which I think once we've done this one as well, uh, it should be close to getting a hundred thousand uh, when we come to sell all of those silage bales. Well, that will be a nice um, cash boost in the spring and hopefully enough to uh, see about getting a new tracks out with uh, more horsepower. Right, we've got the baler all hooked up. So this is the Cavernland or Vicon, depending which uh, option you choose. Fast bale, so it's a non-stop bale wrapper. Uh, it only does the small 3,500 litre grass bales though for wrapping. Uh, but it's it's the first time I've actually used it on FS22. I didn't use it very much on FS19 because I used to like the variable bale capacity mod. Which, when you was using the large capacitor bales, this baler didn't really work as a fast baler. <laughs> it was actually slower than using the stop start bale wrappers. Uh, so I didn't use it very often on 19. I tried it on Sandy Bay, I think I tried it on. And it just kept, because of the increase in bale capacity, it kind of confused the uh, baler, so it kept stopping when it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> 
So yeah, well, I thought I'd try it out on 22, see what it's like, because obviously we're not using the uh, increased bail capacity sizes. Uh, the outer rows, it is very, very slow because we've got a lot more grass in this outer swath because we've got three rows into one. So it does pick up speed a little bit when you get into the middle of the field where there's less grass in each swath. Um, but I can imagine using this with a swath that you've used uh, created with a like a 15 meter windrower. I imagine this is painfully slow with that much grass in a in a swath that big. So we've currently got 75 bales. So we had 71 off the other fields. So you can see how quick this is going up up to 76 now. So yeah, we're going to get quite a few more off this field. I imagine we'll get close to 100, if not just over 100 bales in total. Which should be, what's that, 350,000 litres of silage. So yeah, we should be in for a nice payday when they're all fermented and we sell them. Right, so we're just coming up to our hundredth bale. So that's 98 just being wrapped there. So yeah, we're definitely gonna get well over 100 off these four fields. Uh, which isn't too bad considering this field I don't think is fully fertilized, so we haven't got any nitrogen on it. Uh, at least I don't think there was. Yeah, we need to take soil sample so it's not gonna show is it for um uh, pH and nitrogen levels, but I imagine they're not going to be optimal so the yield's not going to be as good as it could have been uh, but still over a hundred bales we we'll say that hundreds just coming out now or is that the 99th? No, there we go, there's 100 I reckon we'll probably get another 15 bales, it seems like quite a lot of uh, small field but they are only in the three and a half thousand litre bales so they're not very big last swath to bale up and that is this field all done and all our baling done for this year so we can return this bale I'm not gonna keep this one on boy to lease uh, there's a different baler I'd rather get over this one uh, the only downside to the other baler I'm looking at I don't think there's a bale wrapper currently available uh, that will wrap the bales for it for grass uh, so for doing silage, that is the only downside to uh, the baler I would like to get um, to replace our other baler. So maybe a case of either just lease this baler again in the future when we come to do silage bales. get a different baler, baler all together that we can then wrap the bales from. I'll have to have a look see what's uh, available. So that is it done. So there's 118 bales in total. 71% um, left in here but not quite enough to get another bale. So we'll go and head back to the yard and get the baler dropped off and I can get that returned. I'm going to actually get through this gate. It's very very narrow. <laughs> Baler caught again. Hold it up. Might help a little bit. There <laughs> we go. Definitely not easy manoeuvring around all these access to these fields is pretty poor. Um, I think this is one of those fields that we may look at selling in the future and putting that money towards getting a one of the other fields uh, when we've got a little bit more money to spare to do that. Um, just because <laughs> some of the other fields are far easier to get into.
Right, so what we need to do next is top up our cows feed because they are desperately running low. What I'm going to do is just drop this baler off around here. We'll get this returned to the store later. We've now finished with this. I'll just drop that down there. Get it disconnected. And we'll go and get the feed mixer hooked up and then we can mix up a couple of loads of total mix ration. Right, so I've just been down to the store to buy a bucket which we didn't have one. I can't remember if we did have one on the previous save game and I just forgot to transfer it over or we didn't have one at all. So we've got one now anyway and I also bought a, a wrapped bale handler, a bale spike, where you can chop and change it. It's a little bit smaller than the one we've got for the, if, if you use it for a bale spike so it's a little bit easier to use as well. We'll just drop that down there. Oh, he says. So, uh, decided, decided it wasn't going to come out the bucket. So there we go. So the, yeah, this one, if you're not sure about this one in the game, it's a round wrapped bale handler as it is. But you can reconfigure it to change um, change it so it's bale spikes. I think it's kind of like there's a, um, like a steel tube that fits over the spike and you can just see there there's like a little latch that holds that in place I think mean, there's a spike inside that tube and then you just take those tubes over like off slide them off so you can then use it for a spike I crash into the hay bale stack so if, as we're doing loose silage now I've had to try and work out what the mix so I'm gonna do one hay bale Three scoops of silage and then the rest of straw and see. Hopefully that should give us enough. It's still not the best place for <laughs> manoeuvring around accessing this silage clamp. Heavy. We may need to get the weight on the back, which. Yeah, I don't understand this game sometimes. <laughs> so, like. What was those silage bales we were doing before was 1.1 tons uh, for one bale. This is only 3,000 litres of loose silage, yet it's. We can't pick this up, but we can pick up a three and a half thousand litre silage bale, no problem. Um, I know we've got the weight of the bucket as well, which adds to a bit, but it doesn't seem to like it um, should add that much more weight. But we'll get the weight on the back if we can actually get into, get close enough to actually get it attached. I'm not climbing over everything. Let's see if we can crawl under that gap there. Now, I think the weight of the bucket is 600 kilos. And the silage bars, just to have a quick look, see how heavy these are. So this is a grass fermenting bale, it's 620 kilograms for 3,500 litres of grass. So you'd think that would be 1.2 tonnes with the bucket at 600 kilograms. So you wouldn't think loose silage would be any heavier than a compacted grass bale. But yeah, I can pick up probably two bales no problem yet one bucket full of silage in this and it's way too heavy yeah a bit weird <laughs> I can't imagine silage being any heavier than uh, wet grass and wrapped in a bale at least so we'll do three scoops of silage. 
As for the silage bales we've got, I, we'll see how much silage we've got left in the uh, clamp when we when they're fermented and if we do need to keep a few we can keep a few until we can cut our grass again just to tide us over until we can get some more silage what we could really do with is getting a second silage clamp built somewhere so we can start filling that one while this one's in use and then when this one's empty we can put the grass in for this one and then keep swapping over it's a bit limiting having just the one uh, I think that was three buckets in there yep so we need some hay <laughs> don't want to get carried away and put too much silage in so yeah it would po probably be beneficial to have two clamps but I don't I have no idea where we'd uh, put a second one So hopefully this should be just requiring a partial straw bale now to finish filling this up to 22,000 litres and hopefully we should have total mixed ration. If I've got that right anyway. I think we do have one partial straw bale left in here from last time. So we'll try and see what this one is. I think there's about 4,000 litres left in there. Uh, 4,000 litres left in there, yeah. 4,364. I don't think this is going to be enough to fill it, but I'm just wondering now if I've got that a bit wrong and uh, we may need to just finish topping it up with some more silage to finish that off. It's the trouble with these bale sizes and this mixer wagon, they don't really make for a, <laughs> a nice even mix. And that's going to take all of that, and that's... Uh, 21,208 litres of total mixed ration, so... We have got total mixed ration, let's just check. And we could get away with a little bit more straw, so I think that should be fine then, with three buckets of silage one hay bale and then just finish off with straw so we'll go and grab a another straw bale and finish filling that up so we get the full capacity Another thing I do need to do before we skip through to the next month is top up the dairy container as well. Because that's starting to run low. So we'll just get this one in here and then finish that. This bale then should give us enough left in it to get another full mix up. Just drop this one down here. Pull the fence out the way so we can get in. <laughs> There's definitely not an easy job feeding the cows on this map. And then the annoying thing of this feed mix wagon, the discharge is only on that one side. There's no option to change it, so you have to drive in. You can't reverse in. This is where I'd really like these buildings to be have been made placeable so we could remove them in game. Kind of like modernise the dairy farm once we've got enough money and build a new shed and lay it out a bit better so it's a bit more convenient to use. 
like in, in, improve on the silage, uh, the bunker silos as well. So this should give us a decent amount in there. Yeah, I'll I'll do one more full mix, and that should keep them going then till next month. So we've got 9,712 litres of milk, which should be enough to fill up the dairy container. So yeah, 2,400 litres left in there, so we need 7,500 litres to fill that up. But we will get to a point soon where we, we're producing way more milk than the little dairy container can process in a day. So we'll, we'll start then looking at just selling off uh, the excess milk as straight up milk when we can right, all the cows are fully topped up with their feed I've also transferred over some milk to the dairy container and just checking the uh, price fluctuations I just noticed that canola is at its highest price so I thought we'd bring down what we've got so we just need to make sure we get the right sell point so we want lots of stores it is higher than what it was previously in the last year um, so we need to just check I'm oh, getting the right no nope. oh, tag place that's what I want so it's that sell point there just make sure I actually get the right grid uh, cheese is not accepted here that's just another pallet of cheese spawned which overlaps the milk trigger slightly which is a little bit annoying we get that message every so often so yeah, we've got 40, I think there was, well, yeah, 40,144 litres of canola we've got to sell. So we'll sell this first 17,000 litres, I'll go and get the next 17,000 and then we'll finish off with the final 6,144 litres we'll have left. And then that'll do us for today. So that's 22,707 plus a bonus of 1,828 for the environmental score. So it takes us up to 32,556. So we should get another load the same as that. And then we'll say we'll finish off with the last 6,000 litres. And then that will do us for today and for November. So next time we should have the oats to sell. And we'll look at getting that grass field ploughed up and getting some lime spread on that as well, ready for the spring. Right, we have the final 6,145 litres of canola. I think the game's slightly rounded up in our favour this time. Normally when you transfer things between silos and other things you tend to lose a litre, but we've actually gained one. So we should get around about 10,000 for this in total, which should take us up to 67,000 there or thereabouts. And with the oats we've got to sell next month, um, we should have well over, well, just over 100,000. I think we've got around about 40,000 pounds worth of oats to sell next month. So not quite the 10,000 I was hoping for. So 8,224 plus 662 for the environmental score reward. So it takes up to 65,968, so just shy of 66,000. Um, it's not too bad. So I nearly missed out on that. We could have lost out a little bit if I had just checked that price uh, before finishing up. So we'll leave it there for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. And if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, then please do consider subscribing. I've got more Farm Simulator 22 Let's Play videos coming up on this channel. So a big thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.